In this presentation, I want to provide some comments regarding inference for paired data, and then I will close the presentation by looking at the preview assignment that was given for Section 7.2. So let's take a look at some examples that illustrate the concept of paired data. For example, the prices of a random sample of products, so we're talking about the same products that are carried at both Walmart and Target. Another example would be a set of pre and post test scores for a random sample of the same students. Thirdly, we could look at the artery thicknesses at the beginning of a study and after two years of taking vitamin E for the same group of patients. And then the last example is that we could look at the before and after weights of a set of subjects that are the same for the weights that we are looking at the before and after of. So when we analyze paired data, it's often useful to look at the difference in outcomes of each pair of observations. And we do so uh, by taking differences of the paired data. We have to be careful though to make sure that those differences, that is the subtractions of paired data values, are computed using a consistent order. Then we simply analyze the differences using the same t-distribution techniques that we applied in section 7.1 of our textbook. In other words, the differences now serve as a one sample data set. At this point in the presentation, I wanna make some comments on the paired data example from section 7.2 of the text that was assigned for the preview assignment. And the reason I'm doing this is because in the past, my students have struggled with understanding how to perform a confidence interval and hypothesis test for this particular example. They've gotten things mixed up. So I wanna see if this might help to sort out some of the same difficulties you may have had in doing that preview assignment. So on this first slide, I've reproduced the data that was provided in the textbook for the example from section 7.2. What I wanna go ahead and highlight is if you look at the far right, I've labeled the column that is titled price difference with the notation that should have been used for that example, that is X subscript difference, which represents all these price differences for the various books that were given in that example. Now I wanna take a moment to compare and contrast what you were supposed to do for the confidence interval construction that was part of Guided Practice 7.19 and compare that with what the textbook provided for the hypothesis test in examples 7.17 and 7.18. So for both of those inferential statistics techniques, the prepare step was essentially the same for these three quantities, the sample uh, mean of differences, the standard deviation of differences, and the sample size of the differences. Next, we take a look and see that there is a difference in the prepare step for what was provided in the textbook for the hypothesis test and what you should have put down for the confidence interval for the guided practice problem. So for the, what the book presented, we see that it included listing a parameter of interest, hypotheses, and a significance level. Whereas for the confidence interval portion of your written work, you simply had to include the confidence level, which was 95%. Moving on to the check step for both, we see that you could have simply copied what was provided in the textbook for the hypothesis test from those two examples directly into your written work for guided practice 7.19. That is the check step was the same for both the independence condition check and for the normality check. And then of course the concluding statement regarding what is true if both conditions are met. Moving on to the calculate step for both inferential statistics techniques, we see that the standard error calculation should have been exactly the same for both of them and we get a value of one in 63 hundredths for the standard error for both the hypothesis test that was presented in the book, as well as the confidence interval that you were constructing for guided practice 7.19. Moving on with the calculate step, you'll see that I've provided the work that is needed for each of the inferential statistics techniques. On the right is the work that was done in the textbook for the hypothesis test for the examples that are listed. And on the left is what you should have had for your work that you provided for guided practice 7.19 for a confidence interval. The biggest difference between the two that I wanna highlight that many students make a, a mistake about is on the right for the hypothesis test, we use the null value for calculating a T value. 
And on the left, we use the sample mean as our point estimate, x bar diff when we do our calculations throughout that portion for the confidence interval. That's where many uh, students make a mistake. Otherwise, uh, pointing out the differences again for the hypothesis test in the book, you find a capital T score, and then you use that with our guru to find a P or probability value. On the left, we find a T asterisk score using our guru, and then use that for our calculations along with the point estimate, the sample mean value, to calculate our confidence interval endpoints. The last thing I want to compare for the two inferential statistics techniques we're looking at is for the hypothesis test that was done in the textbook. Notice that we have two pieces. The first piece is the evaluation of the hypothesis test by comparing the p-value to alpha. And then the second piece is the conclusion that is provided in the context of the problem. On the left is what I would have expected to see when you did your write-up for guided practice 7.19, uh, and you can see the statement that was provided, uh, that's provided on the slide for that conclusion statement for the confidence interval. And that concludes this presentation.